Thank you. Non-monotonic negation is a very useful feature to have in knowledge representation languages, and in particular in temporal languages. Because, for instance, we can specify the rules of a temporal inertia, saying that uh, some states of affairs continue and change to the future, unless we can derive some reason why there needs to be a change. Metric temporal data log is a very expressive language for temporal knowledge representation. Essentially, it extends data log with operators from metric temporal logic. For example, a retailer may want to express using this language that in a supermarket, bread has been restocked at least once within the past 24 hours. This can be done with the fact restock bread and this past diamond operator saying that this fact holds at least once within this interval in the past. We can also use the past box operator, for example, to say that this fact holds continuously within this interval in the past, saying that coffee has been continuously in stock for the past 24 hours. The rules of the language allow you also to say that if a product is restocked twice within a period of 24 hours, a new product order should be placed immediately, for example, using a rule like this. Datalog MTL doesn't accept negation, but we know from our previous work that we can extend the language with stratified negation without changing the complexity of reasoning, that is checking if there exists a model of a program and data set. However, some applications might require non-stratified programs. For instance, the same retailer may want to say that every order of a product should recur automatically every week, unless a reorder of the same product is placed earlier. Now we can express that with this rule. However, note that the predicate order here appears under negation, and then it also appears in the head of the same rule. So this means that this rule is non-stratified. Now in our paper, we have been studying data log MTL with negation under stable model semantics. So that way we can cover non-stratified programs. Another reason why we were interested on this is that stable model semantics is the basis for answer set programming, ASP, and this has already been successfully applied in many temporal settings. So we wanted to find a similar semantics for data log MTL. So in our paper, we define these stable model semantics for data log MTL with negation, and we define it in a way that applies to both the rational and the integer timeline. And then we consider the complexity of the reasoning problem, that is checking existence of a model. And we showed that over the rational timeline, surprisingly, it's undecidable. But then we go to the integer timeline. We show that it is X space in data complexity. And then we identify a fragment of the language where it's P space complete in data complexity. That is the forward propagating fragment. The notion of an atom in standard data log is generalized in data log MTL to a metric atom where you can start with a standard atom from data log and then all, add all these metric operators. The rules can have two types of atoms, the positive atoms and the negated atoms. So this is where negation comes into play. The head is also a metric atom, but observe that it's generated by a slightly different grammar, which doesn't allow the diamond and the since and until operators. This is because these operators introduce a form of uh, non-determinism, which is known to lead to an undecidable reasoning problem. Finally, you have metric facts, which are ground metric atoms, followed by this add symbol and an interval, saying that the, the ground metric atom holds for the whole of the interval. The data sets that we consider are metric facts, where this M is our relational atom, so of these four, and then the programs are finite sets of rules. An interesting thing to, obs to observe already is that in contrast to plain data log, in this language, we cannot express a relational fact like this as a rule with top in the body. The reason is the second part of the fact, which is not allowed in rules. I'm sorry, I'm having some technical problems. I'm gonna try to fix that in a second. Will only take a second. Okay.
All right, I think we are back. Apologies for that. So uh, after having defined the syntax, I'm going to briefly discuss the syntax of the forward propagating fragment. The key idea of the forward propagating fragment is that we want rules to propagate information only to the future. So we disallow the future operators from the bodies of the rules, and then we disallow past operators from the heads of the rules. This forward propagating fragment will be important when we consider when we analyze the complexity of the reasoning problem for our language. Now, when we want to define the semantics, the first idea is to define what a, the first concept, the key concept is the concept of an interpretation. An interpretation says for each uh, relational fact and its time point t, whether this fact holds at time t. Then when we want to define stable models in plain data log, one of the standard approaches is to use this scaffold lipschitz reduct to transform a program and a data set uh, having a candidate interpretation into a positive program and a data set. And then you can check if your candidate interpretation is actually a stable model. However, this transformation requires taking negative atoms in bodies of rules and then checking if they hold in the interpretation. Now we cannot do this in data log MTL because the facts can be satisfied at some points at the timeline, but not at others. So it's not clear what would be to perform the reduct on a data log MTL program. Think of what I said before of not being able to represent facts using rules. So we look for an alternative way of representing stable models in plain data log for inspiration. And this way is the one that uses, that characterizes stable models in terms of the interpretations of the here and there logic. This idea has already been used in other temporal logics like temporal equilibrium logic. So we thought uh, we, we would like to try to develop our semantics based on this kind of interpretation. To do that, we define an analogous of a here and there interpretation for data log MTL, which essentially is a pair of interpretations, H and D, where the first one is contained in the second. And what this containment means is that if H satisfies some relational fact at some time point T, then the interpretation T also satisfies the fact at the same time point. The next question we need to ask is when is an HD interpretation a model of a data set and a program? So to check if an HD interpretation is a model of a data set, we look at the interpretation H and see if it satisfies it. And to see if an HD interpretation is a model of a rule, we consider every grounding and we consider every time point. And then we check that either T satisfies one of the negated atoms, in which case the antecedent of the rule is invalidated and the rule holds trivially, or if T doesn't, then we need to make sure that this implication holds for both H and T. This is a standard way of defining uh, what, an H, what an HD model is for other logics that use the here and their interpretation. Actually, in our case, it's a little bit simpler than how it's defined in general. To see an example, we can look at this rule, not P and Q implies R, and see that this is an HD model of the rule. Why? Well, for the positive, so suppose we're considering semantics of the rationals, for the positive bit, P holds, and therefore the rule holds trivially, and then for the negative bit and zero, because P doesn't hold, we need to make sure that this implication holds both in H and T. So in H, it holds trivially as it's empty. And for T, we have Q in zero. So we also need to have R at zero. And with this definition, we can define what a stable model is. I don't want to go into the details, but I just want to give the main definition to show how our semantics is implementing some sort of minimal model reasoning. So essentially for a program, and a data set, an interpretation is a stable model if TT is an HD model of both the program and the data set, and it is not possible to take the first element of the pair T, replace it by a strictly smaller interpretation, and still have an HD model of the program and a data set. So essentially, we're making sure that everything in our interpret in our stable model has a reason for being there. Having said this, I look into the problem of reasoning, which I said before is the problem of deciding whether a program and a data set have a stable model. Now there's a standard model for non-monotonic, a standard problem for non-monotonic logic. So this is why we look into it. There are some other problems like cautious or brave entailment, which uh, we believe our semantics would also be well suited to deal with. However, we'll focus on this one for the moment. And in terms of previous knowledge, we know of previous work, we know that reasoning in positive data log MTL, so without negation, is P space complete in data complexity and S space complete in combined complexity. 
from our previous work, we know that if we consider stratified negation, we still have the same complexity as in the positive case. And this is, for example, over the integer and rationals. One interesting thing to note is that we consider classical negation. So if we take a semantics where negation is evaluated classically, we get undecidability for the reasoning problem. And this is because using classical negation, we can simulate the effect of diamonds in the head. And as I explained before, this is known to lead to undecidability. So this is our first result. If we consider the rational timeline, we have that reasoning for data log MTL with stable model semantics is undecidable. And this is true even if the program is fixed. So for a fixed program we give, if this, pro this program is propositional and it belongs to the forward propagating fragment. And if we consider even only bounded data sets, we can prove this by reduction from the halting problem or tuning machine. And the key issue is that actually we can use stable model negation to simulate again, the effect of these non-deterministic operators like diamonds in the heads, which as I mentioned, leads to undecidability. So if it's undecidable for the rationals, how about the integers? For the integers, we were able to show that reason is, is X space in data complexity. And now to show this, we use a Buhi automata, very similar to the ones that are being used for the positive case to check if there exists a model. So in particular, we use a first Buhi automata to check for an HD model of this form, TT, and then another Buhi automata to check for an HD model of the form HT with H strictly smaller than the first one. So the accepting words of the automata correspond to models. And as I explained before, for a stable model, you need uh, for it to be of the form TT being an HD model, but there cannot be some smaller H so that HD is still a model. So therefore, a word accepted by the first automata, but not the second, will represent a stable model. Now, although the automata are very similar to the ones we use for the positive case, the fact that we need to check a word not accepted by the second automata means that we need to do complementation of an automata. And this leads to an exponential blow up, which is why we get X space instead of P space. So since the positive case is P space, uh, we're wondering, can we do better? So this is how we look at the forward propagating fragment and see that for this fragment and bounded data sets, reasoning is P-space complete in data complexity. So the upper bound in this case, since the fragment is forward propagating, it's much easier to start with a part that doesn't depend on the program and then start checking moving forward into the time because information only propagates to the future, whether there exists a stable model. So we can do this with just one automata that does both things of the previous of the automata in the general case. And we don't need to do any complementation and we avoid the exponential blow up. And then the lower bound just follows from a previously known result for P space hardness for a fragment of data log NTL that includes the forward propagating uh, fragment only in the positive case. So to summarize, we have introduced the semantics for data log MTL with negation based on stable models. And we have shown that checking existence of a stable model is undecidable for the rationals, but X space over the integers over data complexity, and in particular P space complete over the integers for the forward propagating fragment and bounded data sets. The idea in future work, of course, is to provide tighter data, tight data complexity bounds for the integers. We actually believe that reasoning is P space even in the general case. And we'd also like to study the combined complexity of reasoning, see that there are no surprises there. And finally, because representing information using the rationals is quite useful in practice, we'd like to see if we can find some fragment of the language where reasoning becomes decidable over the rationals. That's all I'd like to explain today. I have a few minutes now for questions. And then if you have any later questions or comments, you can get in touch with other me or the other corresponding author, Shemek, who's also in the audience, by our emails. Thank you very much.